What are voltage and current? And to understand these concepts, we need to start with some definitions. Now we're talking about electricity, and electricity is based on charge. And the main elements that have charge are electrons and protons. So here's some basic definitions of these things, voltage and current. Current is the rate at which charge is flowing. And voltage is electric potential energy per unit charge. So what do these things mean? Let's try to understand this. What causes the charge to flow? And how fast does it flow? So let's answer all of these questions. Let's start by thinking about this basic charge element. So we've got a field, an electric field, between two charged particles. So for example, a negative charged particle, that's an electron, and the positive charged particle, that's a proton. And there's an electric field between these charged particles. And we draw that with an arrow from the positive to the negative, just by convention. And let's think about these things physically. Well, the protons are in the nucleus of atoms. And so they are going to be fixed. They're not going to be able to move. They're in the structure of the material. Whereas the electrons are much more mobile and the electrons can move. And that's the important thing for current. OK, so let's think about a battery. Inside a battery, there's a chemical process which is causing electrons to move towards one of its end. So we say that at this end, there is an excess of electrons. Now, what happens if I connect a wire to this end of the battery? Well, then the excess of electrons have somewhere that they could potentially go. They could move into this wire. So let's think about how they might do that. And for an analogy of this, I like to think about a plank of wood. And here's a hand pushing a plank of wood from the left-hand side, pushing it to the right. And the instant that this hand pushes on the left-hand side of the plank of wood, that very instant, the right-hand side of this plank of wood moves to the right. Well, does this mean that there's an instantaneous propagation of material through this wood that's moving and coming out of the right-hand side? Of course not. All of these atoms are in a fixed structure. And when you apply the force here on the left, instantaneously the force causes the atoms that are on the right-hand side to move to the right. And this is the same sort of analogy in electrical circuits. Here we had a physical force. In electric circuits, we have electric forces. Now, let's think about this. If this, were, if this wire were now to be connected to a light bulb and then around to the positive of the battery completing a circuit, then would the, when we switch on that circuit, the instant we switch on that circuit, would these excess electrons travel at the speed of light to that light bulb and light up the light bulb? And the answer is no, they don't. The answer is a bit like this plank of wood, but not exactly the same because electrons are acting a little bit more like they are a fluid rather than fixed atoms in a fixed structure in the plank of wood. So let's try to understand that a little bit more. So let's think about an atom. So here I'm going to draw an atom where there's a, I'm going to do a simple case with a single proton in the middle, or I'm only going to show one of the protons, for example, and there's an electron which is uh, sort of whizzing around that proton. Now, there's a, an attraction force between these two. Here we showed force going from positive to, or the electric field going from the positive to the, to the negative. I'm going to show the force in terms of things that are attracting. And I'm going to use this with sort of arrows towards the center to indicate attraction. Now let's think of this example here. We've just connected this wire and that gives an, an opportunity for these excess electrons to enter the wire. So let's think of this as an atom which is in the wire and it's got a balance of the protons and the electrons. And now an excess electron, electron appears from the left. Well, this excess electron is going to have an electric field and an attraction to the proton, which is in the center of this uh, 
atom here. So I'm going to draw that with an attraction force. So this excess electron coming out of here is going to be attracted to there. Now in a metal, it's very easy for an electron to be added to an atom and to join an atom. The electrons are in the valence band and there's very little to stop it from joining. They can easily join and they can also easily leave. And metals are great conductors. That's one of the reasons they are great conductors. So let's think about that for a minute. Let's think that this electron here is excess electron and it has just joined this atom. The electrons are spinning around in a sort of chaotic way around the nucleus. And so let's think that at a future time, these two electrons come close together. So now I'm drawing the same atom, but at a future time. And now they're close together. So there's still an attraction force here between the electron and the middle of the proton. There's still an attraction force here, but now there's gonna be a repulsion force between these two electrons. And don't forget there's an excess of electrons now in this atom. And so this repulsion force can very easily cause this electron to leave the atom. And then it goes off and continues in this process. Now sometimes of course they'll leave to the left, uh, sometimes to the right, but we are talking about a resultant excess because there's an excess in the battery, there's going to be uh, an excess of negative charge coming from the left. And so the resultant movement and the resultant flow of electrons will be to the right, stepping from atom to atom. So I'm gonna call atom here, this sort of sequence of atoms. And as I say, they don't always move in the same direction, of course, but there's a, an overall resultant flow from left to right. That's what's happening as these electrons are moving in this overall flow way. So they'll be coming along this wire here and then they'll get to the end of the wire. And because in this particular case at the moment, there's no circuit completed, they'll start to build up at the end, which will then of course create excess negative at this end and they will flow, be pushing, the, the fields will be pushing them back and they'll get to an equilibrium state. So this is the equilibrium state you have if you simply connect a wire onto this end of the battery. So now we've got charge and we think about how it moves from one atom to another. Let's think about what it means for current and what is this thing called voltage. So let's come back to our battery and let's think about what do we mean when we say a battery has, for example, nine volts. Let's say a nine volt battery. What does that mean? Well, let's explore this a little more. It's the voltage is the electric potential energy per unit charge. And for this, I like to think of an analogy of gravitational potential energy. So let's think about here, we've got the ground and we've got a platform and we've lifted a person up to the top of a platform. Now the person has potential energy, gravitational potential energy. And this energy is equal to the mass times the gravitational constant times the height that you have raised them by. So this is now a potential energy. It means that if they were to jump off the platform, they could convert this potential energy into actual energy, kinetic energy, by falling down to the ground. So let's think about what that means in the electric equivalent. So if I now connected this wire up to a resistor, we'll talk just more about that just in a minute, and then another wire back around to complete the circuit, then we've now provided a path for these excess electrons to now move through the resistor along the wire and recombine with the positive charges at this end of the battery. So that's now going to be an analogy to completing this circuit over here if we now made a series of steps that this person could jump down, jumping from one step to the next. So let's think of an analogy of these two things. Here we've added this resistor and completed our electric circuit. So let's think about this person here. This person could now jump from that top step down to the next step, one step down. When they do that jump, they are converting some of their potential energy into kinetic energy. And then that kinetic, and let's assume they stop on that step, 
then that kinetic energy would be converted into leg muscles, energy in the leg muscles to absorb the impact of the jump and friction on the step, which means ultimately it is lost as heat. So the potential energy here turns into kinetic and then gets lost as heat. Well, let's think about that in terms of our electrical system. Our electrons moving along this wire are moving from atom to atom, just the same way as this step to step here. Each time there's kinetic energy as it moves from atom to atom, and then when it combines with the next atom, there will be a loss of that kinetic energy as it combines with this atom before it then gets expelled again and continues the process, just as this person could jump down to the next step and the next step and the next step. Each time they are jumping down this step, they are lowering their potential energy, their potential gravitational energy. Each time the electron goes from one atom to the next, it is lowering its electric potential energy. So it is lowering its voltage. So as these electrons here are moving around the circuit, they are lowering their voltage. So what is this thing called resistance and how much voltage do they lose? Well, let's think about that in terms of low resistance and high resistance. So low resistors, for example, wires, electric wires that we've been talking about here, where it's easy for an excess electron to join and then leave, those types of uh, resistors, they have very, you can think of them as having very small steps and you don't give up much energy when you go on each of those steps. So you don't lose much potential on a very small step. You don't lose very much potential and also you don't give up very much energy. You can skip, skip, skip between those very, very small steps. Higher resistors can be thought of as bigger steps. So higher resistors are materials where it's not so easy for the electrons to find atoms that they can combine with. And then it's not so often that they leave. And when they do, it takes more energy. So for high resistors, each jump requires more energy from the electric field and it has more losses, uh, which is more kinetic energy into heat. But as you move through that resistor, the voltage, and it does each of these steps, the voltage will be reducing through that resistor exactly the same way as this potential energy is reducing as you jump down the steps in gravity. So again, voltage is an electric potential energy. So now let's link these two concepts, voltage and current. And to do that, let's think about an example circuit where we've got a voltage V across a voltage supply or a battery, for example, and we've got a resistor R. And because we've completed the circuit, there will be charges flowing and therefore we will have current. And traditionally, we draw an arrow for the direction of current in the direction that a positive charge would travel. Uh, that's just a, a historical convention. So the electrons are going in the opposite direction to the indicated current. So let's think about how this relationship is between voltage and current. And to help us to do this, let's think about what would happen if we doubled the resistance, for example. Then if we would have a circuit where there is twice the resistance to R, uh, if we have the same voltage here, what is gonna happen to the current? So to do that, let's think about our analogy. That would be the same as doing the same amount of work to raise people up and give them potential energy, but if we doubled gravity, for example. Well, if we've done the same work, if we doubled gravity, we could only carry half as many people up to the platform. So that would be half as many people who could then go down the stairs. So that's the exact analogy over here. That would result in a halving of the current. In our electrical example, if you had the same voltage but doubled the resistance, or you had what means you had a, a material with a property where it was harder for the electrons to find atoms and harder for them to move through that material, then you could only have half of the amount of charges moving through if it was twice as difficult type of material. And so the last thing to think about to try to understand this relationship is to think what would happen if you increased 
the voltage. So let's say, for example, we doubled the voltage. And again, let's think of our analogy here. That would be like if we doubled the potential energy. So if we doubled the potential energy, then we could either take the same person twice as high, or we could take twice as many people to the same height. And in the electrical circuit example, that would be like having uh, twice as high would be like having two resistors, uh, one after the other. Then uh, they could come, the current would be coming through with the same current because we would take, this would be the equivalent here is taking the same person to twice the height or the same number of people. So it's the same number of people coming down, but they're coming from twice the height. It's the same current through twice the resistors. Or we could also think of it as lifting them to the same height, but having twice as many people. And so in electric circuit example, that would be having the same resistor, but having twice the current. If you double the voltage, you can double the current. Exactly analogous here. So hopefully this has given you more insights into voltage and current and the workings of electric circuits. If it has, give the video a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below. You'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And you can find some links to social media where I'm on a quest to find signals in everyday life.